So edema refers to the visible swelling caused by the buildup of fluid within the body's tissues. And when an indentation remains after a skin has been pressed in the affected swollen area, this is actually called pitting edema. So the pitting edema effect may also be noticed when one takes off a tight shoe or a stocking and notices those indentations that are left behind on their feet or legs. Swelling caused by pitting edema usually make the skin feel tight, heavy and sore. Some other symptoms that may actually occur in other patients include tingling or burning sensations around the swelling, deep pain and aching in the swollen areas, skin that feels puffy and stiff, skin that is warm or hot to the touch, numbness, bloating, water retention, cramping, unexplained difficulties in breathing, chest pain, fatigue, or even coughing. There are actually several different causes for putting edema to occur in the body. They include number one, which is plain and simple gravity. So if one has to spend too much of time sitting or standing in one spot for too long, the water actually begins to pull down to their arms and their feet, which causes a noticeable swelling or edema. Number two is weakened valves in your veins, and this is called venous insufficiency. So when the valves in your veins are actually weak or tired, it gets increasingly more difficult for your blood to be pushed up from those veins back to the heart, lungs, and upper body tissues, which in turn causes a condition known as varicose veins, which are these large worm-like veins that are actually pooled with venous blood that can be seen on the surface of the patient's body. Number three is underlying medical conditions such as heart failure, lung disease, liver failure, or even thyroid disease, which may all go on to cause an edema. Number four is side effects from certain medications. So edema may actually be caused by specific medications such as pain medications, or even some blood pressure medications. Corticosteroids such as prednisone and prednisolone may also cause edema. NSAIDs or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as naproxen, ibuprofen or even aspirin can cause edema. Heart disease drugs such as acibutalol, butoxalol, betaxalol or even bisoprolol are also known to cause edema. High blood pressure medications such as the diuretics, AC inhibitors or even beta blockers can also cause edema. Number five is poor nutrition. So if you aren't eating a well-balanced diet or if you're eating a diet high in salt or sodium, fluid could actually begin to build up in your body due to the body's high sodium content. Number six is pregnancy. So edema of the legs or swelling of the legs in pregnancy is usually due to the growing uterus pushing down on the body's blood vessels, which are found on the lower trunk of the body. And number seven, which is a compromised immune system. So an allergic reaction, an infection, burns, trauma, or even clots in the body are also all edema causing disorders. So the treatment of edema actually depends on the severity of it and the actual cause of the edema. And as you can see, there are multiple causes for the disorder. So the most common approaches taken to combating edema include number one, which is leg elevation, which means keeping your legs raised and off the ground rather than them hanging down all the time. Number two is support garments, which are compression socks or compression stockings, which actually improve the venous blood circulation in the legs, preventing the veils from pooling with blood and swelling up. Number three is dietary interventions, so advising the patient to decrease their salt intake as well as their alcohol intake can also prove beneficial in treating edema. So number four is medications. So if your edema is a side effect of a medication you are taking, your doctor may actually stop the medication or change you to a different type of medication. Your doctor may also prescribe water pills or diuretics, which can help alleviate your edema. So number five in your treatment approach would be to actually resolve the patient's initial problem. 
So if your patient suffers from liver disease, you'll have to try and get that liver under control. Heart disease would need to be treated by cardiac medications. Kidney disease will also have to be tackled individually. And once the initial cause of the disease is treated, the edema would actually begin to disappear on its own. So the fifth form of treatment is to actually resolve the initial disease, which is causing the complication of edema. Make sure to like, follow and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos.